Hi friends, I'm really excited about bringing you this video today because we're doing dupes, but what we're doing is I'm gonna kind of go product and then brush. I had found so many dupes for really nice brushes that I absolutely love, and these are a fraction of the cost. The quality is just as good. And I know that so many times when you're looking at a brush, you're like, oh my goodness, I can't really afford that. But you really want that specific brush. So I've got some really great substitutions for you. And if you do enjoy this kind of content where I show you possibly buy this, not that, alternatives to the high-end products, and you're not already subscribed to my channel, I invite you to subscribe. I would love to have you here. Please, everyone, if you would hit that like button, it would really help me out so much and thank you all of my regular subscribers that you guys are so faithful to me and that you come and check out my videos and see what I've got going for the week so before we get started I always get asked what I have on so I throw up a picture of that I want to tell you that everything that I talk about today including what I have on and all of the makeup that might not be in this video will be listed and linked down below and I will try to make sure that I also put it in the first pinned comment underneath the video because sometimes it's a little bit hard to find the actual description box and let's get started so the first brush that I want to talk about is the one that I'm probably the most excited about and it's this brush right here from Hourglass. This is a dual ended brush that I use mainly for blush and highlighter and powder. I use this a lot to powder underneath my eyes because it's smaller, but it's very fluffy and I can, you know, tap it off and hardly any powder gets on there if I don't want it to. And then, you know, setting under my eyes, I'm not getting too much powder on. And then it just seems to be the perfect shape and the perfect way to be able to apply blush, highlighter. It's just a really good brush. You can use it for a bronzer. You can use cream products with this, whatever you want to do. And I really love this. Now, my other one that I love that is also high end, but not nearly the cost is this one right here from Tarte. Now I've almost replaced the one from Hourglass with the one from Tarte. By the way, this isn't the alternative. I'm gonna show you these two that I love that are high-end, and then I'll show you the alternative. This one from Tarte is a little bit more fluffy. It's very soft. It is quite a bit more soft than the Hourglass one. So I will actually link this one too because Tarte ha always has the best sales. And you can get a brush like this for like 30, 40% off, and I'm sure they're gonna be having a sale coming up very soon, especially with Amazon early prime days coming up. I'm sure they're gonna be having something like like that but this is such a good brush it equals the same as the hourglass brush however recently i had gone into ulta and i had found this ulta made brush and i will tell you that this brush is almost the identical brush to the hourglass brush except for I think it's a little bit softer like the Tarte brush. See, it's not quite as big and fluffy as the Tarte brush, but as far as the quality and the feel of it, I would say that it really does rival the Hourglass one. Now, the, I know that the Hourglass one is like $68, something like that's really outlandish. The one from Ulta is 20, and that might seem like a lot, but you know, break it down, you're getting $10 and $10 for a brush and look for a sale. They always have 20% off coupons for not even their prestige brands, which Ulta's collection is not a prestige brand. So you can go ahead and get this brush. Performs just as good. I love it for powder. I love it for highlight, bronzer, blush, anything you wanna do. It's just a really great all around brush that I would highly recommend as a substitute for the hourglass one. Okay, so brush, then makeup. Huda Beauty recently has their Easy Blur Primer. This has no silicones in it. And when you put it on to your skin, you're going to feel this cooling feel to it. You're also going to feel that it feels extremely silky like it would have silicone in it, but it doesn't. I like the fact that it doesn't have silicones in it. I don't mind a silicone primer. I feel like they really fill in the pores and they create a barrier between your foundation and your moisturizer. But if you're somebody that it clogs up your pores and you really don't like it, this is a really good one. But you know what? 
years ago, I mean, I, I'm, I'm probably talking like three years ago, Wet n Wild came out with their Impossible Primer. And at the time, everybody was like, this is so good because it doesn't have silicones in it. And it is basically the same primer for a very fraction of the cost. It feels very hydrating, very cooling on contact with your skin. And then as you rub it in, it gets that smoothing effect going. I feel like this is pretty darn close to an exact alternative to the Huda Beauty one. But the Wet n Wild one, fraction of the cost, and it really does perform almost identical to it. So really good one on that one. All right, another brush. This brush I've had for years. I've shown it on camera for years and years. This is an It brush for Ulta. I love this as an all over buffing powder brush. And I love it for finishing powder because as you can see, it's got the duo fibers there. It's dirty. I apologize. My brushes aren't clean right now, but it basically has the duo fibers right there. It's a little bit more dense down in here, but really fluffy and really airy on the end. And that's really great to lightly put on any finishing powder. However, again, it can be a little pricey number. I think it's around $30, but this brush right here from Real Techniques, and this has been out for a while, but it's not identical in that you can see that it's a little bit smaller. However, the fibers on the end are much more airy than they are on the It Cosmetics one. And why I think that that is important and why I like that is because you're picking up even less product. So you're picking up a little bit of product, go, you know, tap it off, put it into the palm of your hand, whatever you do, and then buff it in. And because these are so much more airy, and it's kind of, like I said, kind of hard to see, but because it's so much more airy, you're even getting less powder. And for me, as a mature woman that has dry skin, that is really important. So this is a good one to, as an alternative, it's not a dead on one because obviously this size, but it's really super close. Back to makeup, Benefit has this duo pencil that is used for brows, highlighting, all kinds of stuff. Let me get my glasses so I can tell you what it is. High brow duo pencil. So on one side, you're getting this matte looking pink, and they do have a couple colors in this, by the way. So this is kind of a matte looking pink, and then on the other side, you're getting the pearl looking side. And these are going to be a little bit hard to see because they are my color, but they are definitely ones that I use over and over again. I sharpen this baby all the time, and I use mostly the matte one to go up into my brow. And let me just do this side so you can see kind of what it looks like. Apologize for looking over there, but my mirror is over there. It's really just very easy to work with. It's a pencil that I reach for every single time I do my makeup, but I recently put in an order at Moira and found their duo pencil, and I feel like it's every bit as good. This one from Benefit is very creamy. It's very easy to work with, as you just saw. I put it on in just one second, and here we have the one from Moira. has the same exact properties. It's got the light pink, with the matte side and then the pearl side on the other one and just so pretty both of them but again we're talking a fraction of the cost so let's go ahead and put this on this side and we will just brighten up that brow and by the way I'm using the matte one on that so for just a few dollars you can get this one or you can spend the high-end cost and get the one from benefit benefit and I thought that this was a really good alternative as well next brush is interesting and I, this one is the same one that has the red handle that is BK Beauty's viral foundation brush and it is for a reason now I will say and disclaimer this before I say anything else even though I'm going to show you an alternative I do feel like the quality of BK Beauties is quite a bit better than the alternative I'm going to show you. So if you want to invest in something, I would say go ahead and invest in the BK Beauty. And this is the 101 brush. Now this one is the travel one from the Angie Hot and Flashy line. But as you can see, we have an angle here, very dense brush, and it's soft enough and flexible enough that as you're patting on your makeup, it just works phenomenally. And I absolutely love this brush to put on foundation. It's probably my favorite brush for foundation ever, but it is quite a pricey little number. They do have really good sales on though, however, so watch for that if you're wanting to invest in a brush like this, it's really good. But I do feel like the one from 
e.l.f., which is the precision angled brush, is pretty darn close. So here's the two of them together. I, the differences are that the e.l.f. one has just a little bit higher of a back on it. So its taper is a little bit steeper. It is a little bit softer, not quite as dense. However, even as I'm touching it right here, I don't feel that there's a ton of difference in it. So there's the side and the angle, there's the front, and then there's the back, and then there is the top of them. They're so close, they are just so close. So when I'm putting on my foundation, I do reach for the BK Beauty, but when I found this brush and wanted to bring it to you as an alternative, I used it over and over again. As you can see, it's dirty on its outside too. I used it over and over again for my foundation and I did feel like I've got that airbrushed, beautiful look that you get with the original from BK Beauty. So this is a great alternative if you just can't afford it. There's a new powder out from Laura Mercy. I, I think it's fairly new. Anyway, it's her new pressed powder and I am actually really loving this. It's the Translucent Pressed Setting Powder Ultra Blur. And I'm, I don't think that she has many other colors. She might, I may be just talking out my other end. But if she does, I'll make sure that I show you right here on the screen. First of all, I love the packaging. I love that it's got a mirror. I love that it's got your little hidden compartment for the puff. I, I just really like it. The powder, however, is that no powder powder that I talk about and love so much. When Dior used to have it, they had their forever, I think it was the forever powder. Anyway, the Dior one got discontinued. I feel like this one is every bit as nice. Now, when I put my finger down there, I'm like really, you know, rubbing it all over. And you can see there's a little bit of powder on there, but it doesn't pick up like a regular powder is. You know, a regular powder, you rub your finger in there, you'll pick up a ton of it, and then you'll feel how thick that powder feels. Well, putting that kind of powder on your face and you're a mature woman that's dry, that's going to be a problem. We all know this. And that's what I love about this is it's so light, it's so airy, and I did set this side of my face with it so that you could see. It blurs out like a dream, so your pores are gonna disappear. You're going to have this beautiful airbrushed look about your face. I just was really impressed with how much I did like it, but it's expensive and we want to try and find things that might be just as good. This one I found because of you guys. So several of you were telling me, try the Rimmel Stay Matte Powder. And anytime a powder says matte like this, I kind of shy away from it. So it took me a long time to dip my toe and figure out maybe I should try it. <laughs> well, I'm so glad I did because it has the same feel in putting my finger in there. Now I said that, you know, a lot of powders you can pick up a lot. You can feel how thick they're going to be. This is light as air and it works very, very well in setting down a mature woman's skin that doesn't need that heavy powder. As far as blurring, it's fantastic. As far as keeping your makeup matte, it's really good for that too. And then when I tried it and was just so surprised by it, I thought, you know what? That Laura Mercier that I just picked up is just about exactly like it. And I feel like they look identical. I don't feel like you're getting super dried out by either one of these. This one from Rimmel, of course, is a fraction of the cost. And I'm not sure, but I'll put this up on the screen, if the Laura Mercier is talc free or not. She did recently go talc free on her loose powder, but I don't know if this one is. So I'll make sure I put that up. So I know that the one from Rimmel is not talc free. So that is a difference there for you to consider when you're considering the powder. But as far as blurring, setting, all of the yummy things, this powder to me from Rimmel is every bit as good as the powder from Laura Mercier. Okay, another brush. This again, it was an it brush for Ulta and I got this years and years ago. You can't get it on the Ulta website. You can get it on the It Cosmetics website now. It does have a different um, handle now but it is the same exact super huge fluffy powder brush. It is one of those ones that puts the powder on really quickly, buff really quickly, you're done. It's outstanding as far as how fluffy and how soft it is, I really like it. But in walks Elf once again with another precision brush. And what I wanna show you, and the difference is, is this one is kind of pinched on the ferrule right there. 
um, and the it cosmetics one is just round so when you look at this from this view right here they do look about the same however this one looks a little bit more pinched this way hope that makes sense to you fluffy same fluffiness is that even a word same fluffiness on both of these very fluffy very soft on the it cosmetics one these to me could are completely interchangeable um, by this not that type situation i find that i do like the elf one a little bit more because it is a bit more airy not quite as dense as the it cosmetics one and as i'm using it it just feels a little bit softer so for me this one is a definite this one is way better than the original one that i was showing you as the high-end counterpart so definitely save your bucks and go in for the one from elf it's such a great alternative all right this part is a situation where it's like buy this not that and it's a little bit different so i'm first going to tell you that it's the house labs new powder blush that they came out with not very long ago this one is called color fuse blush it's a powder blush and this one is in hibiscus haze it is kind of a mid-tone pink very pretty blush and i will show you right here and i got a lot on there nice blush really easy to work with I did find that it grabbed on a little bit when I was putting it on this cheek. So you can see kind of right here, where I had a little bit of a problem blending it out. Just, just a tiny bit, not anything that I would say, you know, don't buy this if you really want it type situation. But I love how saturated it is. And I also love how it really does stay on all day long. It's a great blush. It's just really expensive. But Essence came out with their blush crush products and this one is in strawberry blush flush strawberry flush now here's the difference in the two this one has a tiny bit of a sheen in it so as i'm going to show it to you you will probably be able to see the sheen but the color is so close i do have it on this side of my cheek but the colors here are so close to each other so this is the one from House Labs, and then this is the one from Essence. Fraction of the cost, I'm not exactly sure. I think this is upwards of 30 plus dollars, whereas the one from Essence was like six, maybe, probably more like four. As far as longevity, blush always has that problem with, well, I always have that problem with blush. Longevity is an issue, and it's hard to find a blush that will stick around. This one from Essence sticks around just as much as the one from House Labs does. Powder blushes aren't in right now. Well, I know cream blushes are in, but for me, when I'm really needing something to stick around, I need a powder because creams seem to fade away very quickly during the day unless I set them with a powder on top of them. But what I like about this one from Essence is that it was a little bit easier to work with and I did like that it had that very, very subtle sheen to it. So this isn't an exact one. It's not one that I'm saying, oh, this is identical. They are perfectly matched. It's not. But to me, it's a buy this, not that situation if you want to save some money. And I actually do like the formula of the Essence one just a little bit more. The last brush that I have to tell you about is one that is kind of, again, not an identical one, but it's a buy this, not that situation. This is what I bought like three or four years ago to put on my self tanner with and I adore this brush. It's huge. It's fluffy. When it's clean, it's really soft. <laughs> it's not clean right now because I use it all the time. But what's interesting about this brush is it's almost $50. It might even have gone up to completely to $50. It's huge. It buffs out everything and my self tanner goes on like a dream. And when I do it with a mitt, I always get streaks and patchiness, and I don't get that when I use a brush. And I love this brush, but man, that price tag, it's just a lot. But I did find this one this past year at the beginning of summer. And of course, this isn't as big. I'm just, again, I'm showing you a buy this, not that situation if you need to save some money. And what I like about this brush a little bit better, I like that it's round. And I also like that it's a little bit smaller, it's softer. I didn't think that that was going to be possible. It's easier for me to use because it is smaller. And I like that I can really just buff and buff and buff 
and again, no streaks, no patchiness with using a brush instead. So it does have a different handle. So you're not gripping it like this. You're gripping it around the little knob right there. But I really gravitate towards this one. And not just because it's just $10 compared to the $50 which bonus. And in comparing both of them, I do feel like my tan turns out a little bit more even, a little bit more nice with this one. So, you know, kind of take it for what it is. If you have this one already, I bet you absolutely love it because it's a great brush. But if you've been wanting this one, you've been like, no, I'm, there's no way I'm going to pay $50 for a brush like that. This one is such a good alternative. And I actually reach for this one more than I reach for the high-end one. So the rest of what I'm going to talk about is from, is makeup. And what I have on for a lip liner on this side is from Urban Decay. They're 24 seven lip pencils. They came out with new colors. This one is called Love You Back Talk. Now, if you know their lipsticks at all, Back Talk is kind of their core color. It's kind of a neutral, your lips but better color that just about any woman can wear. And they just came out with a few different variations of it. This one is a mid-tone rose color that I fell in love with. Absolutely love how creamy and luscious these lip liners are. They're just really great for being able to outline your lips, smudge them in, and then you're going to have fairly a good lasting power on these. I really do like them. But recently Maybelline came out with their lifter liners and this color is fine line. And when I put these up next to each other, I couldn't tell a difference. There's no difference there. And I love how creamy and yummy these are from Maybelline as well. They're just really good. And I have that one on this side. They blended together just absolutely perfectly. So I really felt like this was a situation where you could save, you know, I don't know, $17, something like that. And it was absolutely as nice as. Now I will say that the ones from Urban Decay did last a little bit longer than the one from Maybelline. However, not longer, like you can't eat with them and they're gonna be there or drink with them all day, lick your lips, whatever. They're not gonna be there all day long. But the ones from Maybelline, I would say they give you about an hour less. You're getting the identical color and the identical creaminess. They're really, really beautiful liners anyway. And I know everybody all over has talked about them, but they're some of my favorites. And I definitely for me, it's a situation where buy this, not that. And I also this month found this Charlotte Tilbury little mini with a lip gloss in a kit. And this is Icon Baby. This is their kissing lipstick formula, which is a very creamy one, almost like kind of a sheer with color type situation, but it's a really good formula. Now the kissing lipsticks claim is that you can have your shine and kiss too. I don't know if I feel like they are as long lasting as they claim they are. I feel like they probably are a com very comparable to the one I'm gonna show you as far as how long they last, but the formula is super creamy and you do get that shine. It's not matte at all. It's definitely a higher gloss lipstick, but here is this one from L'Oreal. This is called Ferris Nude. It's been out forever. And I had forgotten how much I like it anyway, but then you go in and you figure out, oh my goodness, that is just about the same color and the same formula. I can tell you it is the same formula, 100%. I love this color. I love to put it on with any liner. You wanna put this on with a very deep colored liner, nude liner. You want to put it on with a brown liner or a rose liner, any of those. It's going to be just almost identical. And as far as wear time, yeah, I don't feel like the Charlotte Tilbury has anything on the ones for Maybelline. So definitely felt like this one was a situation where man, oh man, save your money because these ones from Charlotte Tilbury are really expensive for a tube of lipstick. And honestly, I really don't feel like there is much difference there at all when you're looking at it like that. Lastly, I want to show you my pick for an alternative for the Naked Urban Decay Original Naked Palette. Now, you probably already know that they brought this out as a limited edition for just a little while to be able to share with people what the original Naked Palettes were all about. It does have a brush, as that one just fell. It does come with a brush, a duo-sided duo brush, which I think is really good. Their brushes are nice quality. I love this palette. I loved it when it was an original, but it is the quintessential neutral palette. It's just got some beautiful colors in it. It's got 12 pans in here, lots of very neutral browns. It does have those cool gray colors over here, and it's got a couple of warms in there. Now, the one thing that I will say about this palette 
is that the only color in here that I really felt like was a nice metallic was that color right there. I feel like all the other ones are very subdued and many, many people absolutely love that subdued look, but there are a lot of people that really do love that high shine metallic look from their, their eyeshadow palettes. Now, this is a pretty kind of a taupey brown color very eye-catching love it i've used it and used it since i got it again and i'm really impressed with the quality of it i can't say anything bad about it their shadows are great i feel like though that this is a bit overpriced the reason i feel that way is because of the stone cold fox palette from ColourPop. there are i don't know what is this i think this is a 35 pan palette first of all let me get this one open there's no mirror in here or there's no brush in here either but Okay, you get 12 colors in here, and the colors that you see in the one from the Stone Cold Fox, they're so close that you can match them. Now, I'm not going to swatch all 35. I'm not going to try and tell you that these are identical, that you, you know, can find the identical colors, because I don't feel like the colors are identical, but when you get them up on your eyes, I feel that like that's where the really magic happens. As far as formula, I like the formula of the ColourPop better. You guys know that I'm a huge fan of ColourPop, have been forever. And you can see just from me holding it up. And I do feel like the metallics from the ColourPop one are so much better than the ones from Urban Decay. And this is actually my favorite metallic color from that palette. And it's the one I use instead of this one. This one's a little bit too warm that came out of the Urban Decay. But that one, that metallic for a one and done shadow, cross your lid a little bit up into transition a little bit, then you have just such a beautiful color. So this one is not identical. This is not a dupe per se at all. I'm not saying that it is. What I'm saying is when you buy the one from ColourPop, you're getting more colors, you're getting more choices, you're getting more metallics, you're getting the really bright colors that you can put on your lid that are matte. You don't get any of that in this one from Urban Decay. And then you're getting these intense metallics that I think are just beautiful. I wore this one on my lid for like three weeks straight when I first got it because I absolutely love that silver. And with parties and all the gatherings that we have coming up, we're wearing a bright metallic on the lid like that is so much fun to do. So for me, once again, this is a situation where buy this, not that, because you're not only gonna save money, but for me, the quality is better. You're getting more of a variety and you can recreate the looks. No, not a problem whatsoever. I just, I really love the Stone Cold Fox palette. All right, that's it for today. I hope that you did enjoy seeing these dupes that I had. I had so much fun bringing them to you. Really, it comes down to what you prefer. If you really love that high end look, you love the high end, I say go for it. I love makeup. I have both. This is my job. And so I always have both, but there are ways that you can save. And if you do like this video, let me know down in the comment section. And also let me know if there are any dupes that you know of, because I have had several of you give me some really good ideas about dupes. Hope that you are all doing really well. Hope that you come back around and see me very soon. I love you so much. Take care of yourselves. Goodbye, my friends.